Welcome to a small extra video about covering a kayak. If you have uh, bought my kit, you have uh, received this little pamphlet uh, with tips and tricks. Most of the kayak covering is covered in the previous videos about covering a kayak. Uh, and in this uh, pamphlet you get some extra advice. And now I want to share with you some new techniques that could be helpful. I have a new frame here that I want to cover. I've already stretched the fabric 30 centimeters lengthwise. It's super important to stretch it that way first. And uh, now here comes the new stuff. In uh, classes lately, we have been using a technique where we have skipped the whole zigzag stitching that I described in the first videos and instead um, just stapled the fabric to the gunnels. And um, after some years, I found that maybe it, was, it could be done easier. And uh, we started a new technique where we only do one staple in the gunnels just to center the fabric around the frame. And then we do all the stretching with the first stitching. So I want to share that with you now. But first, I have cut the fabric so that I have plenty. You see here, there is at least a couple of inches extra fabric around the center of the kayak. And it will be cut later. So it's all nice and soaked now. And I can start to do the first stretching. So what I do is I center the fabric approximately where it meets here in the middle of the kayak, approximately. And um, I take a staple gun just around the middle of the kayak where the cockpit goes in. I stretch the fabric lightly to one side, put in one staple, and then I stretch it really hard from the other side and put in one staple. And that's the only two staples that goes in. Remember to get them out after finishing the kayak. So now we're pretty much ready to uh, sew. I've brought a few extra tools. Of course, I have the needle and the super strong thread that we use. And the length of the thread is pretty much the same length as the whole seam here goes, plus a little bit like this. Not much. So basically you just need the length of the seam and a little extra. Like with the previous videos, remember that around the cockpit it's nice to have it a little loose. So what I do here is I start about two inches ahead of the Isifik, the back deck beam, and I just do a little stitch like this. I've come up with a new knot here for starting because this is so slippery, the thread. What I do is I do a half stitch around the, th the thread on the inside here, like this, and I tighten it. And this doesn't go up, it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm good to start. So I put the needle through on both sides like this, just pulling the fabric tight together and nothing more. And the pattern of these stitches are exactly like I showed you on my video. The side that faces away from me has short stitches and the inside has longer stitches. The new thing here is that we use these stitches to do all the stretching of the material. Oops, I get tangled in thread. And I'm getting there very soon because soon I'm on the deck here. 
So I start already now to increase the distance a little bit so that there is space between the two parts of fabric. But not too much, maybe three centimeters at this point. And now I'm, I have actually reached the deck. So this is the point where the fabric needs to be tightened well together. So to just know what I have, I kind of just stretch it like tightly like this, just to make sure that it's firm. It shouldn't be stretched yet, just needs to be firm around the frame. And having that firmness, I can try to get a good stretch, which means about five centimeters distance between the two parts of fabric. So five centimeters or two inches, that's the gap you need to have to get this as tight as it needs to be. So, so now we're good to go. I, I just continue sewing with this pattern. Make sure that every time you stick the needle through, it's about the length of the needle, actually five centimeters two inches and I make real short stitches on one side and I make really long stitches like three four centimeters on the inside here nice and long a lot of thread to begin with. Oops. So now I've done a little bit of stitching here. It's still pretty loose. I would say this is 30, maybe a little more than 30 centimeters. And now I'm ready to stretch it. So you probably wonder why I have this stick lying around and I'm gonna show it to you now. So what I do is I just take the stick and I curl it around the thread and then I have a handle for pulling. That's it. Now it gets really tight. Then I take the pliers, make sure that it's tight. You see the fabric comes completely together here and I put it in place. Now you may think it's really hard to get started now because if I just do follow the pattern here then it, I don't get any stretch. You actually need to go out not completely five centimeters but maybe three or four centimeters on the first stitch here after you stopped and then you're back on the five centimeter stretching.
again I've sewn a little bit like 25 30 centimeters and I'm ready to stretch so I grab my stick again now this is all this is completely loose and you can see there is a good five centimeter distance between the two halves of the fabric so I curl it around the stick again and start stretching and look what happens to the pliers now when I stretch it I stretch it firmly and when I see the pliers move then I'm, I'm done you see the pliers move there that's a, that's my sign I then need to take it away put it back in where I stopped so that's it I can just check the sound of it sounds good now I will just let the camera roll here while I do the next couple of rounds and then I'm gonna talk about the distance between the fabrics because obviously now the the fabric gets shorter as the kayak gets narrower toward the end so there is less fabric when I near the end get nearer to the end and therefore of course you don't need that much distance between the two layers of fabric or it will be get too hard to stretch but as we get closer to the end there will be more fabric underneath it's it's not as firm as it is around the center out here towards the end there will be more if you look up, look down here there's more a lot more fabric in this area and it's because it just it's just the nature of the kayak it kind of folds nicely around the middle and then it gets more bulky under the end so um, you should actually keep this distance for quite long until the well you can start changing after after the spot here where the strap goes across and then of course you always need to check what you're doing so every time you've pulled the fabric you should stop and check is it tight enough could it be tighter could it be is it too loose could also be too tight if you start crushing the frame then it's obviously too too tight and and then also keep, keep moisturing the fabric I think it's good for a stretch now. The needle stays there. And here we go. Oops. And now look at the, the pliers again. The, the pliers are moving. That's a sign of the stretch being just perfect. Okay. Sounds really tight. this is not a technique for everyone it takes a little skill you need to to look out what you're doing 
need, maybe you need to do it over once or twice if you don't get it right the first time. The benefit of this is that you actually have one process less to do. The process of zigzag stitching or stapling. You can skip that one. And I'm sure you'll find it really easy and fun to work this way. If you can't find a pliers like this, then you can buy them in my web shop. Now, we are getting closer to the end and I find myself wondering if it's going to be too tight. So I actually I decrease the distance just a little bit to, I guess, to four centimeters. Now this spot, it's, the cag is 30 centimeters wide. So instead of sewing too far and having to redo it, I'd rather just give it a stretch now and then I can judge if it's too tight or too loose. Um, so here we go. It's definitely not too loose and it's not too tight either. I can feel that from experience how much strength I'm using here. So I just go on. Now, last stitch here I had four centimeters distance. So I think, I think I'm just gonna stick to that distance for a little while. And then when I get closer to the end, I can, I can decrease the distant distance. with this kayak skin you will notice that there's very little there's little openings here but they can easily be sealed on the inside of course when we do the folding stitches there won't be anything but uh, and that's also why I like to keep the distance between the long stitches long because there will be few of these little holes that needs to be filled. Okay, I'm still a little concerned that this might be wrong, so because I can feel that there's a lot of fabric loose underneath here, so I don't go more than, I guess, what could this be? Three, four, three and a half. Tighten it and take a look. That went almost too easy, I think. But it's not a big deal. I think on my next few stitches, I just don't decrease the distance. I just keep going. But first I need to do this little um, deck rope. Again, I'm really curious about how much stretch this, I guess, is uh, something like 2.5 centimeters, one inch. And at this point, the cag is, I would say, 16 centimeters wide. Uh, and I think it should be good. But uh, again, I don't do too long st uh, stitchings at the time because I just need to check all the time that it's appropriate. Yeah, this is just perfect. So now I guess I can gradually decrease the distance. 
toward the end. Still 2.5. I'm down on two now, but at this point the keg is only 10 centimeters or four inches wide. But still it's very forgiving. If one of the stitches are a little off, then it's usually not a big deal. Let's see how this goes. there's still a lot of fabric here at the end so it just keeps stretching but not too much I guess a couple of centimeters now less than one inch would be good and now I want to give you the bottom view just to make sure you can see what's going on here from another angle still kind of need to have a certain feel for the fabric here how much the problem is you look from the top and you don't see the what's underneath so you need to check once in a while and just see that it's not too loose now I'm down to less than two centimeters a little less but I don't think I need to go much, much less than that. And I think it's actually time to stretch now. I'm down on less than two centimeters. I guess I'm down on one centimeter, but at this point the keg is very narrow. It's, it's an inch wide or something. So there's really not much fabric to, to pull here. And I'm pointing the stitches out to the edge of the frame in order to make a nice looking folding seam afterwards and yeah I guess this will be the last stretch now it takes over the first pocket stitching so let's see nice nice and stretchy and then remember that you shouldn't use the this as an excuse for bad work but I also know that when I finish this and um, it has all dried out then it will be even tighter so I'm actually more concerned 
about getting the fabric too tight than I'm concerned about not getting it tight enough.